Hello, and welcome to Data Diversity Talks, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers around data. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Shannon Kemp, Chief Digital Officer at Data Diversity. Wait, what? With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who can help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. And this week, we're going to mix it up a bit. Several of you have asked me about my bio when I'm going to be interviewed. And well, today's the day. So please welcome Tony Shaw, founder and CEO of Dataversity. His bio was the first podcast we published. You can check it out online at dataversity.net forward slash podcast. So Tony, hello and welcome. Thanks for stepping in here. Hey, Shannon. Um Thanks for asking me. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I guess I guess uh, it makes sense that if we're going to turn the tables here, then I should be the one to do that. Um, and uh, if I stick to the script, I should say that today we're joined by Shannon Kemp, Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity. And normally this is where we would uh, read a short bio about our guest, but uh, since that's the point, of this podcast is to get into your bio, then we're going to skip that part and get going on some questions. So um, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So um, Shannon is the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity, our CDO, uh, not the usual context that we use those letters in, but um, uh, really Shannon is the person who runs all of the digital activities for Dataversity. So uh, it's it's a very appropriate title, and she is sort of our chief data officer also, um, and we might get into some of that later in the conversation. But um, so uh, this seems a little weird for me to be asking this question, but for anybody who may not know, perhaps is listening to the uh, us for the first time, uh, I'm going to ask you about the organization that you work for. <laughs> and what exactly you do. So what is Dataversity? <laughs> Great question. Um, so Dataversity is a company that specializes in the education of data management. And that's a very broad spectrum from the end to end from, uh, manage, from the data architecture and managing the database to the analytics and everything in between. We do a lot of uh, education and data governance. Uh, that's been kind of our core topic lately in addition to data architecture, data modeling. Lots of uh, interesting aspects of data education. Uh, in terms of what I do, uh, as you mentioned, I uh, manage all the digital aspects of the company and the digital uh, programs that we run from uh, creating and building the uh, and managing the website to the um, webinars that we produce, the online conferences that we produce, and uh, our online training center um, with with um, more in-depth uh, education, which, so very exciting, and and yes, and lots of data. <laughs> I do also, <laughs> I help, you know, when face-to-face -face conferences need to go to a digital aspect, uh, and through all these things, I, I do work with a lot of our data. I try and keep us up to date on the latest in data privacy and policies. Uh, I am, so I'm the contact for that, uh, as well as uh, dive into our analytics often, so I can make good decisions on how to build out these uh digital programs. All right. Well, I'm I'm actually going to come back to uh, some of those things that you mentioned a little bit later. But, um, uh, you know, I know this was uh, exactly the job that you wanted to have growing up. 
<laughs> Actually, it's something. Um, the tongue in my cheek there. I'm. <laughs> Because none of these jobs existed when we were growing up, but um, oh, they did not. <laughs> what did you, yeah? What did you want to do when when you were growing up? Well, when I was very little, I either wanted to be Ella Fitzgerald or Wonder Woman, um, but those weren't really in the cards. <laughs> um, but then when going into, uh, I did. It was involved in a lot of theater. I did a lot of theater growing up. Actually, went to college to major in theater um at southern oregon university uh which is in ashland oregon famous for its shakespeare festival um but when i got to college i discovered i um i really didn't uh it wasn't for me i didn't have the passion to start over and do all the networking and the, it wasn't uh, i didn't love it as much as i thought i did uh so i went i discovered physics. <laughs> so uh, I switched my major to physics. Um, I took a couple of business courses as well, because um, I'd always wanted to get in business. But business, that was not the right university for business. The first class that I went to, into, I um, fell asleep in <laughs> and then went, showed up for the midterm and the final and got an A. So, you know, it was... <laughs> It was not, it was, that was not for me. So I wanted to learn. I just really wanted to uh, dive into some other passions and physics, specifically quantum mechanics and theoretical physics was really exciting to me. Lots of data there. Uh, and, and then a minor in music, um, ultimately trying to create the, the, the best sound system possible. <laughs> so but um but yeah so that's well, that's what I, I wanted know, to be <laughs> I know you've continued to pursue uh your music interests through mm -hmm. some current day activities why don't you tell us about that Ella Fitzgerald I'm not but I do love singing uh blues and gospel uh, I'm in a choir right now a church choir so uh, it's a no audition but it's it's a fabulous or uh program it's one of the most amazing programs uh with we're very blessed to have a, a huge choir almost 100 person choir with <laughs> with some amazing musicians uh who are a part of that so i get to use those talents i forget exactly what song it was that uh you sang uh when we we're in atlanta for enterprise data world and uh your dad got up on stage with the guitar and you mm -hmm. I think you might have dragged him up, but uh, you sang something. Do you recall the song? Three Little Birds. Okay. <laughs> Bob Marley. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was, um, uh, I mean, we all knew that you were in the choir, but I think it was a wonderful surprise to uh, everybody to actually experience that little performance. So um, maybe uh, when we get back to in-person events fully again, we'll, uh, we'll do that. You know, Sounds homemade good. jam that we <laughs> yeah. yeah all right so um uh bring us up to the, there's a chunk of time between school and when you eventually joined uh dataversity so why don't you give us a little bit of that um we can just get a sense for the context under which you actually sure. joined dataversity sure yeah so um i think start a little bit younger that before um I used to work with my dad a lot he worked from home he was a wholesale uh rep for shoes sold to companies wrapped different brands and sold them to companies like Nordstrom um and I kind of grew up in the Nordstrom stockroom he worked with Nordstrom before um he became a wholesale rep and so I, you know, would help him with his p &Ls. I would help him with this and that. I learned a lot about business. I wrote my first business plan when I was 12. <laughs> I really wanted to start and grow a business. Um, and that has always been in the background. A lot of the stuff that I did was discovering what my passions were outside of that. Um, I worked, started working for Nordstrom when I was 16. And in and out of college. And as soon as I... Um, when I left college, I went back to Nordstrom. I was going to work for a year to uh, 
earn some cash and do some traveling. I wanted to to travel the world. And I went back and a few months later, I was promoted and to uh, an assistant buyer in uh, the men's shoes in Bellevue. At, at that time, the buyers were at each individual store level and department level. Um, and then uh, within the next three years, I ended up with nine promotions and moved all over the country. So I ended up just working uh, my way through Nordstrom and ended up working there for 11 years. I uh, was a buyer and worked in various different jobs and had a lot of really great mentors in terms of learning business. And, and as a buyer, we were encouraged to treat it as our own business. Uh, and it's kind of a sink or swim, you know, you, you learn and you just, it, it was great. Uh, I was very lucky in getting the opportunity to work with Blake Nordstrom uh, and him being one of my mentors. He was just such a smart human being. He could meet somebody and never forget their name. And out of all the employees that Nordstrom has, it's really impressive. Um, yeah, yeah. So um really it was it was great and then I uh was on a plane I went and I did finally travel I got to Ireland fell in love with Ireland and I went back a second time not much uh later and on my way back was a plane full of Microsoft employees from the uh office outside of Dublin going flying in for the company the annual company meeting like oh well this is awesome. Okay. So I'm going to go work for Microsoft. So I gave Nordstrom my two weeks notice and found a temp agency that, uh, that temp to Microsoft. I didn't even know what a browser was at that point. <laughs> I just decided I'm going to go <laughs> work for this company that has global offices. Um, and got in through a temp agency to, as a customer service rep was hired full-time six months later as a group admin for a general manager and uh, spent another, I spent 11 years at Microsoft, um, worked my way through lots of different um, great learning experiences. I became a telecom analyst for the call center, uh, managing over a thousand KPIs for the call center, which is crazy. Um, lots of uh, things that we did there, uh, forecasting the volume, the call volume traffic, organizing, forecasting the um, call volume down to 15 minute increments so we could determine how many staff we needed on the phones if, by 15 minute increments in, in, in intervals and it was it was a lot of fun I loved so I got a lot of exposure and data there my mentor there was a CPA an accountant and then I learned Excel from a lot of the Microsoft accountants which was great which is exactly what it was built for <laughs> who it was built for um and yeah, and then and then I was in 2007, part of the massive layoff that the company had when uh, in the recession. And at that point, I'm like, I decided that uh, instead of looking for another job within the company, because I certainly had the contacts, I just I decided it was time to take a break and do my own thing uh, and work. If I was going to keep working that hard, I wanted to do be more involved in something creative and be have it be more visible and more hands-on to something evolving versus this tiny little piece and and a big corporation. Um so I yeah so I uh decided after many after a couple of months of thinking that I was going to go into freelance writing. I love to write. I wanted something creative. It was one of the many business plans that I had. So I started and that's how I met you. <laughs> well, yeah, I um, uh, not to tell your story, but uh, you know, I have I have my version of of um, how we met. Of course, uh, I'll let you tell yours, but if it doesn't match up with mine, then I'll. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, so, how I, did do you remember how we do you remember how we met? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you uh, posted an ad in Craigslist. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I was and I was searching, you know, part of being a freelance writer to be to make any money, you just have to apply to as many jobs as possible. Yes. Do you and remember I, what the project was? 
Yeah, yeah. It was to convert EDW talks into articles. It was, yeah, it was uh, taking transcript, making transcriptions and, and then trying to make them into articles. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The first one I did actually was for, was one of John Ladley's talks. So um, I, here is where I am going to um, sure. embellish for you because uh, I remember, uh, I mean, even back then we were, we were communicating by email, of course, but um, I remember one of the first phone calls we had, and uh, I gave you a little bit of, of background as to what we were looking to accomplish um, because we had only just renamed the company uh, as Dataversity at that point. Um, and uh, I, I wanna say that this was on a Friday that we had this conversation. And uh, I think we agreed to talk the, early the following week. And over the weekend, you had created an entire new website for us. <laughs> that was uh, you know aimed at some of the strat strategic direction that i had outlined on the friday so um uh you know at that point i was sold <laughs> and i think we started talking about coming on full time uh yeah. almost immediately so um yeah i don't remember how good the transcription was or the article but i certainly re remember the website and um yeah then we were off and running yeah yeah we we did we launched the website april 1st 2011. okay i didn't remember that part but but zdw uh, yeah oh yeah that part i yeah yeah EDW so Chicago. um all right let's start talking more about data then and um uh um i guess uh you know did you did you come into the job with some uh idea of what what data was or what you know what it meant to be working with data um no. I know you had some other jobs that involved data analysis but you know did you have a concept of what it was to manage data no none none at all I I mean I had I had done some projects to for data quality projects at Microsoft, um, when I was the telecom analyst, uh, so we I certainly familiar with many individual pieces of it, but I never thought about it holistically. Right? I knew how to generate data, I knew how to pull data, I knew how to create a chart, uh, <laughs> but uh, in terms of the big picture, I didn't know how that fit in with everything, mm -hmm. with everything else. No. Uh -uh. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. So let me ask you then to, to sort of reflect on what you knew back then to what you know now <laughs> and um yeah uh, it, yeah i i'm i'm not even quite sure what the right question to ask is but you know how has has that perspective changed um and um uh you know how do you how do you see the data management space now um after a dozen years from the the perspective that you've had uh i have a I definitely have a more holistic view of what's going on uh you know and even it's funny because with all the webinars that i've produced and conferences and and events that i've attended and listened to i'm still learning a lot uh and and when working for a smaller company analytics are still like I mentioned really important to us uh so I had to had to get a grasp at the end to end of you know where are we storing our data how are we pulling it how are we um what's the architecture behind it what's the metadata behind it so that we can uh keep it consistent across platforms and um uh and make it super efficient um it's 
Yeah, I, I just have a more holistic view. I know what data governance is now. I know how to implement a process, which, <laughs> which is good <laughs> and necessary to achieve any of the other things that we need to achieve in, in the analytics. And I still, uh, you know, of course, dive into the analytics religiously. But yeah, I think it's interesting for, you know, um, a lot of our customers tend to think that we are experts <laughs> at everything that that all the experts teach through data yeah. diversity. And, um, you know, I hate to disappoint them by saying, you know, I'm not not an expert on this topic. I understand uh, where it fits in, but uh, yeah. it is interesting to me how even at the scale that, that we operate, which is um, really very small compared to, you know, some of the enormous organizations that, that we, help educate through what we do um you know all the principles still apply and you know the things that we learn through listening to uh the largest organizations and how they manage their data uh can actually be applied even in a uh you know a small organization like our own so um yeah those those principles are really I think, um, uh, you know, universal. Um, yeah. So, um, all right. So based on this, this perspective that you now have and the position that you, you have sort of sitting, um, able to look at a whole bunch of different, um, aspects of, of data management and data, um, application, um where do you think things are going in terms of um you know the significance of of data uh management data governance and the type of jobs that people are are going to be working at in the data space uh in years to come do you have a a view on that I do you know I have been lucky in being able to interview a lot of people and get their the take on it already because even though you know we may not be you know experts ourselves we we are so blessed to work with so many experts and use as resources um but from my own business perspective um i i definitely see the trend of um the jobs increasing um through uh in in the role of data it's become it's so important to understand um, what data is, how to use it, uh, and especially as more chief digital officers emerge and it's a fairly new role and become prevalent in companies in terms of it, to initiate that digital transformation that's happened since, especially since COVID, um, and since uh, you know so much has gone online. It's even more important people are real companies are realizing that they need to get a grasp on their data and they need to digitize a lot of their data that hasn't necessarily been uh, digitized it need they need to organize structure um the policies the processes implement data governance around uh the data they need to in order to have data quality uh, a lot of companies are way ahead of that and are initiating you know machine learning concepts and uh, programs, but uh, some we've seen so many companies who try to stand up machine learning, but stand it up on data that isn't organized, isn't prepped, isn't that there's where there's no quality, and they uh, the machine learning projects fail because uh, the data wasn't good to begin with. So as these things continue to evolve, there's definitely going to be a lot more jobs uh, where an awareness. At, data needs to exist and you plus you have the additional jobs of that have always existed like the analyst um but you need that data architect to help bring better data to the analysts uh no matter what so uh, i wanted i mentioned this earlier on i wanted to um branch off into a couple of specific roles sure. that you have at dataversity um sure. uh the one in particular that i'm curious about is the or that I, I'd like you to share with people anyway, I, I know, <laughs> but, uh, obviously, but um, 
uh, you know, at a very early stage um, in the in the privacy um, in, in the world of privacy, as as new regulations came out, uh, we of course always felt that it was very important that we followed those regulations and practices um, very closely and tried to set a good example for others. Um, uh, and we certainly didn't want the potential embarrassment of being caught out not complying. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, you raised your hand and said, OK, well, I'll I'll take this on. Um, so you are our designated data privacy uh, represent. I forget the, the term exactly, but, you know, as required by GDPR and some other regulations, you are our designated person. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that um, role um, and how you how you perform that on our behalf? Sure. So uh, data protection officer really is what that's that is. And it's really just being a point of contact for anybody who has complaints or questions about how we manage their data. So of course we collect data from people on, we, when pe somebody fills out a form uh, to download a white paper or fills out a form to register for a webinar or one of our events or for our purchases something from the training center, you know, we collect data uh, and in, like you say, I mean, with a company name like Dataversity, we, we should probably get it right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, you know, I really work hard. It's hard to keep up with these days on the data privacies, but I really work hard to keep up with the laws and what's happening and what we need to, um, the, uh, the, how we, uh, the communication um, that we publish and make sure that it's really transparent on what tools we're using, where data is being stored, how it's being stored, links to you know any software as a service linked to their uh, privacy policies and how they are staying compliant. We vet all of our software companies that we use um, for their compliance with data privacy. And it's we vet them before we we buy the tools is, is one of the most important RFP components for us is to say, how, okay, how, how do you store the data? Uh, who has access to it? Are you compliant? And how are you staying compliant? Because it's, it's so hard. Is that, is that an important thing to you? And of course, all the companies we work with say yes. So it's, um, uh, yeah. And then and also up. mention, uh, if you also mention, if you would, so your uh, part of your role is to educate the rest of the staff and make sure that you know they are also following the the protocols true yeah we had to write policies and practices to ensure that we're not sending pii you know via you know openly via email it's all encrypted it's all stored in secure locations and nothing is ever you know uh Ex there's no exposure to, um, right. you know, or it's, you know, getting hacked, anything like that, or accidentally sending something to the wrong person, that kind of thing. So we have a lot of really tight, and we talk about it all the time in staff company meetings and, you know, everybody's had to sign a privacy policy uh, contract and, and how and where they'll send PII. So. Yeah. I mean, as the CEO of the company, um, uh, you know, probably like any CEO, I get kind of irritated by the the um, level of of um, you know regulation that some of these things impose. Uh, but thankfully, you are always there to keep us on track, and more importantly, uh, you know, to keep keep the folks who are actually handling the data uh, on track. Um, but I I understand both sides of this issue very well um you know somebody trying to run a business and also uh as somebody who has a lot of respect for the uh the goals of the legislation and as a data user myself you know as somebody who um whose information is out there um so what i will say is that uh you know i think the structures that you've set up have enabled us to be 
compliant with actually relatively little effort. As long as everybody is well educated and informed about what they have to do, um, it's not that difficult for us to be in compliance. Um, you know, we just have to stay vigilant. And so, you know, I, I think in a sense, we're actually a pretty good example for other small businesses. Um, but uh, so, um, uh, you know, one of the one of the things that I, I know that you ask people about typically in these in your interviews with them is how would you advise somebody to get into a career like yours? Um, uh, so I'm going to break that into two questions because yours is a I mean, you're not a typical data management professional. You're that's part of your job. Um, you're also a media um professional at this stage uh so i'll i'll ask you how would you from what you've seen and heard from others um how would you advise somebody to get into the data management profession if that's what they would like if that's if you know if that's their career goal you know i i've loved everything that I've done in my career. And the thing I love about data diversity is I get to follow my passion. I get to have a role in, in, and a lot of say and input into how the business gets developed. I can see visions of what's next and how what's going on. And you are so gracious in letting me try everything, um, especially at your expense uh, with all these different things. And, you know, and I bring that up because uh, the number one thing that I'm finding from a lot of the practitioners is that's the best advice is to get into, be passionate, find your area of passion, right? So if it's analyzing the data, you know, really just keep get into it find you know find a way to develop that skill if it's uh, architecting the data end to end and saying okay what is how is this going to flow what is that going to do just find that deep passion there's so many different areas um, whether it's on the IT side or on the business side uh, that is the number one thing that it's just it's going to make any job better not just in a career of data management but it just following that and being honest with yourself about what you love to do and honing it and keep learning. Um, okay. So my, my part B question was going to be how to get into a career like yours specifically. Mm -hmm. um, did, does your original answer cover that as well? Or, I mean, if somebody wanted to be at this point, you're, you're a webinar host, you're a podcast host, you're an, um, you know, an editor, a publisher, uh, a business person. Yeah. Um, you know, you're you're driving um, strategy. Uh, you're you're a very strong process person. Um, you know, it's a very mixed. It can somebody design a mixed um, skills kind of career do you think um or does that just come along with being flexible in whatever job that you that you take on i think it's a lot of both actually I, you know i certainly would not have received the promotions or moved to the next level if i wasn't constantly learning and being flexible as you say in um in what i was doing i you know if you're going to do something do it well. Uh, don't just don't just kind of do it to the minimum level uh, to find that thing that you're willing to do well. Uh, and, and so, yeah, it still applies because that my passion is what's taken my career in so many different uh, directions and taught me so many different things. Like I, I didn't know anything about podcasts before we started doing a podcast, <laughs> and other than I've listened to a couple, right? But uh, you know being willing to learn and just uh, how do I make it the best? So I started listening to the best podcasts or that have the most followers or rated the highest and 
okay, what do all those uh, have in common? And uh, then figuring it out from there and listening and reading to blogs. Um, Tim Ferriss has a podcast uh, that I listen to and he had a podcast on how to set up a successful podcast. And I learned a lot. It's just it, being willing to learn. It's, it's the only way to achieve anything, I think. And to not, and to never assume, uh, I certainly had reached those moments where I assumed I had learned everything, um, you know, especially in my youth. Uh, I think that's a folly of, of, of youth sometimes. Uh, but there's always more to learn. Everybody has something to teach us. And the more open you are, the more curious you are, the more you're going to learn and more the, you're going to discover about yourself, about what you love and where you want to go and where you want to take it. So it's, if you want, I, and I love the, that I have so many roles and so many things to do. It really keeps, there's never a dull moment in my job. And that is the best part, right? For me, um, I just, it's, the, the fact that I get to wear many hats and and be creative as well as be linear and and have use both sides of my brain often. So well, I have to I have to assume there are some hats uh, on the the horizon. Then that you're what what's next? What, I, I, what you would know, you like to be working on next? I, I, I you know just growing this I, company has just been my whole focus. You know, I'd love for us to be a Fortune 500, you know, someday, you know, <laughs> I want to take over the world. <laughs> you know, I think that my favorite part of this job, actually, sincerely, is that we've created jobs. You and I together work so hard to create jobs. And I think that that's just, that's an amazing, that's the biggest reward that that there is. And if we Yeah, keep, I would, I would that, agree. There's, there's a great deal of satisfaction from um from doing that so yeah. yeah uh and and i think you could probably take more credit for that at this point than me because our digital operations are um you know two-thirds of the business now whereas it it used to be the other way around with compared to our in-person events so um all right uh well, I, I'm gonna. Uh, is there a question that i didn't ask you that you'd like to answer anyway ask yourself I, a question i don't know about that <laughs> it, right. uh, I, it's it's different being on this side of the table so uh... <laughs> <laughs> all right um, no. all right then um i'm gonna return to the script uh for a minute and say shannon thanks very much for our interview today it's, uh, it's been a pleasure thank you for inviting me to interview you uh, and to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date on uh, the latest podcasts uh, and the latest in data management education, uh, you may go to dataversity.net uh, forward slash subscribe. And um, I think, am I sending back to you? Am I throwing back to you here, Shannon, for the wrap up or am I bringing everything to a close? That's it. That, that's, that's, that's all we got. It's okay. perfect. <laughs> well, that's what we got. It's a it's a Friday afternoon here. Um, not when we'll uh be sharing the, the podcast, but um uh I wish you a good weekend. Uh and uh we'll be talking to you very soon, I'm sure. Well, Tony, thank you so much for, for taking the time to do this. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, my okay. All, All right. right. Thanks for until much. next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational articles, blogs, and webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Mm -hmm.